thousand horses, and then in another place it will say three thousand, or this person was this age, or in then another place it was this age. There's so many, bro, so many. Go read the book by Ahmed Didat called Islam versus Christianity: The Choice, Volume Two. In this book, he lists out every single numerical contradiction in the Bible, and as Allah says in the Quran. If the Quran was written by someone else, it would have a lot of contradictions in it, right? That there would be ikhtilaf and contradictions, a very high amounts, right? A very big amount, large amount, right? But because it's from Allah, there are no contradictions within the Quran, right? Alhamdulillah. So shout out to the Quran. Anyways, what if you're a kid, but you still, uh, but you still what? Can you say that again? I didn't see your comment. I'm sorry. What's your, who's your favorite content creator? I'm not going to lie, bro. I, I don't really have a, a, a thought that comes to mind because I don't really watch TikTok anymore. I'm not going to lie. I don't really just be scrolling on TikTok anymore. I just post my videos and yeah, of course I'll scroll here and there. Of course I will. Everyone does, but I'm not really like too invested. I know there's a lot of Muslim TikTok drama and whatever that goes on. I'm not really invested in that, but I have my OG people that I like watching and I watch them and I appreciate the work that they do. For example, Adil, for example, Abu Hafsa, Abu Mecca, all of these guys are OGs. I respect them for the work that they do, for the purity. But another person that I really like is that one guy, uh, Ridwanullah, sort of, uh, I think sort of the most uh, merciful is like his username or whatever, but his name is Ridwanullah. I think he does a lot of great work, man. He's very underrated. He explains a lot of things very nicely. So shout out to him, okay? So I know sometimes he asks get on my live and i kind of just like don't but it's okay i don't let anyone on my life so it's okay what if you're a kid and you don't pray so anyone under the age of puberty according to the hadith of the prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam anyone under the age of puberty is not going to uh, be held accountable for any sins that they are committing but once you hit the age of puberty that accountability sets in and you are considered to be a person that has to follow the rules of the sharia at that point and of course a part of that is praying salah assalamu alaikum wa alaikum assalam wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuhu have i ever seen a jinn that's a very good question i've never had a personal interaction with a jinn but the scary part is even if i might have i wouldn't know about it right because not every jinn interaction is a jinn showing himself to you like there could be a jinn standing literally right here right now and there is you know the qareen is there but there could also be another jinn just a random jinn just standing here right now watching me and i wouldn't know it you know what i mean so i mean it's possible i mean we obviously know that the qareen is always there your qareen your jinn that whispers to you to do evil things he's always there but there's also just other random jinns that just live in the world and they just wander about in forests and they wander about near graveyards and they wander about in the dark and they wander about in alleyways and in beaches and in dirty places like the toilet. So, I mean, they definitely exist and they're definitely a part of the world. And Allah knows best uh, what they're up to right now. But, you know, the idea that they don't exist is just, you know, not something that Muslims believe in. Is it normal that my iman goes really low sometimes? Well, this could be from a lack of praying this could be from a lack of connection with allah and you know you know what you have to do bro as muslims at this point unless you're a new revert or unless you're just a very young person like you know what you have to do bro you have to pray your salah you have to ask allah for forgiveness a lot of the times we know what we have to do but it's just the inner thoughts that shaitan and our nafs is planting within us that are stopping us from actually getting up and doing the physical action right assalamu alaikum guys wa alaikum assalam I'm a big fan. Thank you, Habibi. May Allah promote you to an air conditioner. Shout out Asim al Hakim. Okay, Sheikh, Sheikh Ana Asim al Hakim. Do you prefer people pronounce your name Saad or Saad? I mean, Saad is technically the proper name, uh, proper way to pronounce it. I don't mind Saad because it's difficult for everyone to say Saad, but it's not really a big deal. Don't steal my joke, bro. That's not your joke, buddy. That's Sheikh Asim al Hakim's joke. Should I convert into Islam? I welcome you to Islam. I call you to believing in one God. It's the most logical thing to do is to believe in one God, one Creator. Okay, and. Um, just, uh, you know, how could you not believe in one creator? When you look at the world around you, it is impossible. It is insurmountable. It is unlogical to have the belief that this entire world, this beautiful world with all of the trees and all of the uh, oceans and all of the stars in the sky and the sun and the moon and the rotation of night and day and the wind, it's impossible for anyone with a sound mind to believe that this came into existence by luck or by or by by, by nothing, right? This is impossible for anyone to believe that, right? So. Uh, I call you to the worship of one God and I call you to appreciate and worship the person, uh, the uh, the one, not person, astaghfirullah, don't say person, the one who has, uh, who has created all of this, alhamdulillah, so... 
go ahead and do that. And that, that's how everyone should should give da'wah, okay? Everyone should give da'wah like this. Assalamu alaikum assalam wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Thank you, I got you. When you're giving da'wah, a lot of people make the mistake, and it's a very big mistake, but a lot of people make this mistake of just talking about random things, okay? Talking about random things. Like, bro, they'll be talking about how the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam had 11 wives. Or they'll be talking about how Aisha Radiallahu Anha was this age. Or they'll be talking about... Now, these things are a part of the religion, yes. And they're all easily explainable. We can explain them as Muslims and it's fine. But that's not the essence of being a Muslim. The essence of being a Muslim is not being able to explain the age of Aisha Radiallahu Anha. No, the essence of Islam is Tawheed. It's the belief in Allah and the belief in His Messenger Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. Right? But the essence is Tawheed, the, establishing the belief in one God. Right? And the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam called to that for 13 years. 13 years before he ever started, you know, actually delving into the rulings and actual things, making things haram and whatever the case may be. He called it Tawheed for 13 years. Assalamu alaikum, alaikum assalam. Dream vacation? I don't really know, to be honest. Dream vacation. I'm not going to be like everyone else and say like Umrah. Like, okay, obviously, like I would love to go to Umrah. I would want to go to Umrah. It's top on my list. Of course, Hajj as well. But if we're just talking about vacation destinations, I don't know, bro. I haven't done enough research. So wherever my wife wants to go, inshallah, if it's a good place and if it's a safe place, you know, we can go. Much thought to it. Is the spider still in your basement? Bro, I killed the spider a long time ago. Okay, I'm pretty sure so. You know, inna lillahi wa inna ilayhi rajiun. You don't have a wife. Inshallah, when I get a wife in the future, if I get a wife in the future, what if it's expensive? I mean, at the end of the day, bro, risk is from Allah. At the end of the day, we know that Allah has decreed for certain people to be well off and for certain people to be poor. And I'm content with the decree of Allah, and we will work within our means, right? Thank you, Vijay, for the roses. I appreciate that. Can your wife make clothes? I don't know, bro. I don't even have a wife. So if your wife makes clothes, that's good for you, I guess. You know, I mean, you don't have to go out and buy clothes now. So cool. It's a uh, plus, I guess. Are the Muslims going to fight Yajuj and Majuj? So what is narrated about Yajuj and Majuj is not that the Muslims will fight them. It's not that the Muslims are necessarily going to go to war against them in the same way that the Muslims are going to go to war against ad dajjal and the army of ad dajjal right? It's not narrated that Muslims will fight Yajuj and Majuj. In fact, it's actually narrated that Yajuj and Majuj will be so many in numbers. They will have so many people on their side, meaning Yajuj and Majuj, that we wouldn't even be able to fight them. And our only option would be to hide. Our only option would be to seek shelter. Right, because they're just so many in numbers, right? And obviously they're going to die at some point, but they're going to die from a disease that Allah sends. And uh, basically that's going to wipe them out pretty much, right? No one has actually made an edit about you. There's a lot of edits about me, but those are from like a year ago or two years ago, or whatever. Much love, Habibi, Habibi, Barakallahu Feek. Are you South Indian? I am South Indian. Do you care what race or ethnicity your wife will be? If she's a good Muslim genuinely and I'm attracted to her and I like her personality, then khair, inshallah, it is what it is, right? How old are you? Now, I'm not going to lie and say that it wouldn't be easier to marry a desi. Of course it would be. Of course it would be easier to marry someone that is from the same culture. This is common sense, right? So I'm not going to give you the answer of like, yeah, la, la, la. No, of course, you know, I mean, obviously you can have preferences and I do have preferences, but at the end of the day, it's also still true that if someone is a good person, then I'd consider them. Zayed, thank you so much. How do you hide from Ya'juj and Ma'juj? So what, what is narrated is that at that time, the Muslims on earth will be with Prophet Isa alayhi salam and he will take them to Mount Tur in Egypt and they will hide there. That is what is specifically narrated in the hadith of the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. And Allah knows best how that's going to happen and when it's going to happen and where it's going to happen. Allah knows best all of these details and we're not alive at that time, obviously. I mean, we might be, but as of right now, we have other things to worry about, okay? Like our salah and our you know, prayer and our dua and our dhikr and all of these other things, okay? Why is your head like that? I don't know, bro. I'm not going to lie. Basically, we're camping, pretty much, yeah. Pretty much we're camping, right? How do I stop farting in Islam? There's no way to stop farting, bro. It's a natural thing. It's a natural reaction. It's a nat it's a natural human tendency, right? And there's even hadith about this, okay? There's hadith about farting. Yes, there is. There's a hadith about passing gas. There's a hadith about everything in, in life, okay? So, uh, of course, it's a natural thing, and you just make wudu if you want to pray. Again, it is what it is. Alhamdulillah. Name a prophet for an edit. Prophet Yusuf alayhi salam. How do I make a ghusl? Go watch my videos. I've made clear videos about, clear, clear videos about 
um, going to about uh, about how to make ghusl. So go watch all of those videos, inshallah. They're very straightforward, very cool. As a Muslim, I have a lot of Christian friends. So, 